Howdy y'all, welcome to the channel. My name is Aaron Spieler and today I wanted to talk about all the gear that I use and have accumulated over the past year and a half. So, for those that don't know, I do live as a digital nomad, which means I don't have a home. So as you can imagine, that's presented a bit of a challenge to store the gear and have to carry it with me no matter where I go, but I've made it work pretty well and I've done a lot of research and picked out these items very particularly, but I've also only been doing it for a year and a half, so I'm still very new at it and don't have years worth of gear like some other people, but that's all right, no big deal. So without rambling on too much, let's go ahead and just jump into the first item. And what more appropriate way to start a uh, what's in my camera bag video than with the uh, camera bag itself, right? Well, this is the F-Stop Tolopa 50 liter uh, really big fan of it, spent a lot of time researching it, deciding what I wanted out of it, and uh, probably my biggest thing that I love about it is definitely the harness system, the belt, shoulder straps, everything. It's got the ability to pull up here, super padded, very tight, really nice. Uh, another big thing that I really needed out of it, or a big reason that I wanted to get it, was that it actually has an internal camera unit or what they call the ICU. And you can actually buy different ones and exchange them out and it's modular in that way. So that's really nice. Plus, if you get onto the airplane and they tell you that they don't have any more overhead storage bin space or whatever, then it allows you to be able to actually pull the ICU out of it and take that onto the plane and you don't have to worry about sending this down below with all of your expensive camera gear. So that was another big selling point to me. But I've flown with this a few times now and haven't had any trouble, nobody said anything. So technically a tiny bit over the size limit for most airlines, but because of its kind of different shape and because it's a backpack, nobody's ever said a word to me. So, all right, second thing is the camera. So I use the Nikon Z6, which I am recording on right now, so I don't have it to show you. but. Uh, big fan of this camera as well. Spent a lot of time looking at it. It was between this and the uh, Canon EOS R at the time. And uh, I just ended up going with this for two main reasons. One, I uh, did not want to pay that much for a camera that was going to end up cropping the sensor for certain modes. And this camera does not do that. Also, as someone that's a photographer and a filmmaker at the same time, the ability to switch immediately back and forth between photo and video and for the settings to retain each time has been a huge experience for me on this camera and I've absolutely loved it and I'm really glad that I went with this camera. Um, and along with it, I still only have the 24 to 70 millimeter F4 uh, kit lens and it's done absolutely well with me um, or for me. <laughs> but I am looking to possibly get other lenses for it, of course, but I haven't had a need or really a, uh, a reason to get a different lens yet. So that's possibly in the works and uh, we'll see. So item number three is the Rode Mic Pro, not the Plus. I was being cheap when I bought all the gear right off the bat and I decided that I didn't actually need the Plus. And so far that's been true. Once again, I can't show you because it is on top of the uh, camera right now. <laughs> but uh, I've been really happy with it. The only real advantage other than I'm sure just being a little bit better that the Pro Plus has over this one is that it will turn on and off with the camera so that you never run into a situation where you forget to turn the mic on and then you don't have your audio and that's always frustrating and embarrassing. But luckily I've always remembered and haven't really run into that issue either. All right, so item number four is this little guy. The Sony RX100 Mark V. This was the first camera that I started with. Uh, my wife and I were traveling and doing the whole travel blogging thing and this is where it all started. And uh, it honestly is not a bad camera. You know, it's a one inch sensor. It's all built in and everything, but it's tiny. That's the flip up screen. Obviously Sony has come out with several new iterations at this point, but I still use it. Still use it for some B-roll, still use it for whatever, you know, usually it just ends up sitting there, but it's always good to have, you know, a backup camera for those moments, you know, when you just really want something that can uh, help to save the day. All right, so coming in number five is the GoPro Hero 5. Once again, <laughs> severely out of date, but I don't use it enough. Honestly, I don't use it enough to really justify 
getting one of the new versions. Obviously they're really good. I know there's the DJI Osmo, which also is something that I've looked into, but it really comes down to, I just don't use it enough uh, to really need uh, an upgrade, but at the same time, it's always good to have. You know, you never, uh, you never know when you might need something like this, so. All right, coming up at item number six. The DJI Mavic Air. Not the Mavic Air 2, because this thing still does everything that I need it to do. Yes, the picture quality is hurting a little bit, but for video purposes, uh, you know, I don't really mind it. It's been great. And at number seven, the Polar Pro ND filters and polarizers for the Mavic Air, right? This is a huge thing if you're wanting to be able to maintain those cinematic looks when you're shooting at those long frame rates. And for me, I cannot stand when I'm watching drone footage and you can see on the edge of the screen the jitter from the shutter speed trying to keep up with the movement. Absolutely hate it. So those are fantastic. Of course, highly recommended by a lot of people and I haven't had any complaints about them myself. All right, coming in at number eight is my tripod. can't see my face now, so I'll go ahead and put it over here. <laughs> this is the ProMaster XC525. Don't know what that means, but it's just ultra light, easy to deploy, easy to use, really no complaints about it. Knobbies up here get a little frustrating sometimes, feels like you can't get it fully tight, but I haven't had the camera fall off, no damage has happened, so I can't really complain too much about it, but um, anyway. I am hoping to at some point get the new Peak Design tripod. That thing looks awesome. All right, number nine is the Switch Pod. Now, this thing, I believe, started on Kickstarter. Been seen around at this point. You can flick it out, turn it into a little tripod. Blogging, great. There you go. I cannot stand Gorilla Pods. I've had one break on me and drop that little camera across the field because I was running with it. And uh, you always get those little cracks in the little balls that move around in it. And yeah, probably will never use one again. The only real advantage to the Gorilla Pods is that you can just kind of put them everywhere. But tell you what, I'm not gonna hook up my $3,500 camera to a gutter somewhere upside down. Just not gonna do it. So I would recommend this a lot. I'm really enjoying it. I do want to get the little ball head now that goes on top of it because sometimes if you do put the camera down on it, you kind of get in this weird angle, you know, trying to get settled in with it. But uh, yeah, really been happy with it. And probably the biggest and most annoying thing that I own that you kind of have to have is uh, the DJI Ronin S. Let's put that guy over there. <laughs> this thing is a monster, right? Trying to get it into the bag and everything. And the fact that this part up here doesn't lock is really annoying and all that. But uh, the reason I went with this over the Ronin SC or any other gimbals is just because I've used DJI stuff and I really enjoy it. Um, as well as uh, even though the Nikon and the new mirrorless cameras can do just fine on the SC, I decided that I don't know what kind of setups I'm gonna have in the future, and I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to use this, but for longevity purposes, I wanted to make sure I had something that was going to be able to handle anything that I used in the future, not just something that I have now. So, all right, coming up next is the uh, two kind of more simple things, and that is Peak Design cuff strap and the Peak Design capture clip. I love these. Uh, this keeps your camera on your bag, on the strap. Very popular at this point. This is version three. Um, and it's been really nice while vlogging to just have your camera there. You know, obviously with the camera and a shotgun mic, it is kind of bulky, but it's really nice to not have to then get into your camera bag each time or be carrying the camera all the time because I've done that before and it's not fun. <laughs> but. Really been nice, really enjoyed it. Haven't had any security concerns with it. Um, I've even used it on my belt. Uh, really been really nice. And I always wear this strap whenever I'm carrying the camera or pretty much any time I can simply because 
I don't want to drop it and I don't trust people. I don't even trust myself. So why not have something that can save you uh, a lot of money and a lot of heartache just right there on your wrist. Um, really been happy with it. I haven't dropped the Nikon camera yet uh, at all. <laughs> so uh, knock on wood. Yeah, really have enjoyed this thing and I would recommend it. Ah, okay, going into computer stuff. This is the Lenovo Yoga C940. I went with this because first and foremost, I am not a fan of Apple and I'm not gonna get into all that. But uh, with that said, obviously I'm going with the Windows system, but with battery, with screen, with sound, with resolution, uh, I guess that's screen, right? Uh, but RAM, all the stuff, it's, it, it checked all the boxes, right? The only thing that is a downside for it is it does have the Intel integrated graphics. So, you know, they're not a dedicated graphics car, which definitely means if I start doing advanced work in After Effects or even a lot of stuff in Premiere Pro, uh, it definitely starts to uh, struggle and you have to render things out to try to help it keep up with it. It's definitely doable, but not ideal for, you know, a ton of stuff. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend it if you're gonna be doing tons of big projects and stuff like that. But anyway, for being portable, for digital nomad lifestyle, it's been great. So going along with that is the Razer Basilisk X Hyperspeed. I really struggle with saying that word. But this is a gaming mouse and there's really two main reasons that I got it. Uh, first and foremost is the fact that it is Bluetooth because on a computer that has limited ports, I don't want to have to use a port for USB, right? To connect a mouse. Although it does still have that option. So if I'm just gonna be kind of using it casually, then I can do that if I want. But while I'm editing in Photoshop and Lightroom and all this different stuff, it has the dedicated DPI button right here. So if all of a sudden I need fine tuning on my movements, I can boop, click it, boom, very accurate, no jitter, it's just fantastic. So I don't know a lot about mouses, but I can tell you that this is fantastic and that probably going with gaming mouses for accuracy obviously is going to be uh, a good option. So um, a little bit more expensive, but I've really been happy with it and I would also recommend this. Um, next up is sort of a fun little item that everybody should probably have, especially with today's computers. And it's just a little micro SD, SD card reader. So nothing special there, just cheap and uh, can plug in, makes it a lot easier. Next up is the two Western Digital four terabyte hard drives that I use. These are not solid state, so I do not edit from them. They are purely for backup purposes and I have to for redundancy. And they actually come, or I bought little cases for them. So these are these padded little rubberized cases type thing, uh, just to keep them safe. Obviously they're in the camera bag most of the time being protected themselves, but uh, just in case, you know, whenever they're out and about um, to keep them safe. So let's see, all right, on to the next little things. These are just kind of fun little things, uh, not necessarily camera related, but uh, just things that I carry because it's still a backpack. So this is the life straw. Some of you guys might have heard about this, but um, I found about it at TravelCon last year, uh, which was held in Boston, and a uh, really cool organization that runs it and does it, and a lot of, um, a lot of effort going into providing uh, drinkable water uh, in places of the world that don't have drinkable water. Um, it's through a filtration system that goes through here. They have much bigger versions of it, like kind of these tank type things, and I don't know how all that works, but it says that it's good up for 10,000 gallons drinking out of pretty much any type of water. Uh, it'll take out E. coli and all kinds of stuff, so I always love it when I'm out on a hike or out doing a photo shoot somewhere or whatnot, and I find a body of water, and uh, I'm thirsty, and I decide to just do this instead of carrying a whole water thing with me. But it's more just a little gadget that I think it's fun to go out and drink out of a river, but not have to worry about getting sick. So there you go with that. Of course, power bank, always a good idea to have. This thing's only 12,000 milliamp hours or whatever. Uh, takes forever to charge, but it works really well and, and does its job, but it's not fancy, it's not waterproof, it's not anything, it just, it's just there. It just does what it's supposed to do. <laughs> and then of course, 
power adapter, which is always a good idea. Uh, if you're traveling, traveling internationally, this one only does the EU, the US, Australia, and the UK, um, which obviously covers a good majority of outlet types throughout the world, but um, not all of them, so uh, definitely always good to have. And last one, it's this fun kind of little water bottle thing from a company called Hideaway. And essentially, goes in that little case and you uh, pull it apart here if you can, <laughs> struggling. And there you go, a little water bottle. So the whole idea here is that you can go through TSA or any security checkpoint at an airport and not get hassled about a water bottle. Uh, and it just, then you don't have to carry around like an empty water bottle for no reason because now you can just tuck it all away. Just like that. <laughs> and put it in your bag or even clip it. It is cheap, nothing crazy, but I do really enjoy it. But anyway, uh, that's pretty much my first what's in my camera bag and uh, kind of a hodgepodge of things and not a whole bunch of lenses and fancy gear and all that kind of stuff. But like I said, you know, I have to carry all this stuff around all the time and so really deciding if it's something I'm going to use or if I'm gonna have room or if I'm gonna to have to rearrange things and obviously is it gonna kill my back even more <laughs> carrying around all this stuff. So anyway, uh, that's it. Um, I just wanted everybody to be aware of kind of what I have and you know, if you're watching my videos and you have any questions about the different things I'm using, well, here you go. So anyway, that's it for now. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope that wasn't too painful to watch, but um, still starting this channel, getting used to it, and uh, planning on doing many, many more videos. So if it's something you'd be interested in, please consider subscribing, like the video if you enjoyed it, turn on the notifications, you know, all those good YouTube things. And uh, until the next one, see ya.